Hello physical fiends, it's Jordan here back again with another worth of purchase where I play a game for a short amount of time to see if I would buy it myself. Today I'm taking a look at Shadow of the Ninja Reborn. It's releasing this week digitally and of course physically, at least in some capacity. It's a little bit complicated, but more on that later. I'm playing it on the Xbox for this video, the one and only console it doesn't have a physical release for. Firstly, what is this all about? Well, this is a remake of a game called Shadow of the Ninja or Blue Shadow if you're in Europe. Ninjas scared Europeans or something back then. It was an NES game and a pretty decent one all things considered, aged not too badly. But Natsume Atari are on a commendable crusade to randomly remake some of their back catalogue in the best way possible. They did Wild Guns, Ninja Saviors and Pocky and Rocky which is a phenomenal reimagining of the run and gun arcade game. And in fact all of these remakes were handled impeccably by Tengo Project. And Shadow of the Ninja is the latest one. When Tengo Project make a game you know they're gonna go above and beyond. And this is almost unrecognizable to be fair. I can't say I put too much time into the original beyond like 5 minutes and now I don't need to ever again because this game exists. The amount of effort they put into the visuals alone puts any other remakes out there to shame. They are the kings of visual spruce ups and Shadow of the Ninja Reborn is visually just as awesome as the other games they've done. Now it is less appealing on the eyes due to some locations, there's only so wonderful you can make a sewer, it's hardly the mythological Japanese setting of Pocky and Rocky, but the sprites and backgrounds are amazing, big, chunky and detailed. This is an action platformer, pretty hardcore one at that, it feels quite arcadey. Ninja Gaiden is a cheap and easy comparison for my lazy ass. it's tough but not as brutal, at least in my opinion thankfully although there are difficulty settings. There are also two characters to play as, but who needs two when you've got a thick thighed green haired ninja girl? Like who's this other guy spoiling the vibe? Get out of here. You have six stages in the game, which sounds quite short, but actually each level is quite long. That did surprise me. And it has a few things that set it apart. Aside from just hacking and slashing with your main weapon, you also have this chain attack thingy, literally lobbing your chain around in 8 directions like you're some sort of Castlevania. Due to the massive distance this can cover, I started to rely on this more rather than the standard attack. But then you also have a bunch of limited secondary weapons which you can pick up like a giant sword, cannons, a shotgun, a lot of fun using these but I hated scrolling through to choose them. Especially since the scrolling seemed to go backwards rather than in the direction I thought that it should. Maybe it's just from my weird perspective. There's a small negative in my opinion. I think I would have preferred to only be able to pick up one sub weapon at a time which would have limited me you know, wasting my time faffing around in a deadly boss fight just trying to find the tool that I really wanted. The game does play well though overall, it's tough but doable, enemy variety is pretty good and the level design is interesting but I mean there are a few dick areas here and there with borderline impossible jumps as you bang your head on the ceiling and fall to your death. It only happens occasionally and I have to wonder how these slip through in the final game because surely they would have noticed this. Another small thing is that because there is a mechanic for grabbing onto some ceilings, like they have monkey bars or something, you can inadvertently latch onto things that you had no intention of doing so. This is especially apparent during some of the more tense jumps when you're trying to jump on a moving platform. Again, I think this could have been picked up with more playtesting, or maybe it's just a game that's trying to be as close to the original as possible, I don't know or remember. It's still a flaw though. Overall, I think it's a pretty fun game. I don't normally go for these Ninja Gaiden style things, but I did enjoy playing this. It's a solidly fun, put together action game with two or three minor flaws that I think could have been ironed out with more play testing, but very solid. I'm not going to go overboard like I really wanted to do with Pocky and Rocky, but it does its job. If you were worried about longevity, you know, it'll take you a good few hours to get through those six stages for the first time with your controller covered in all your sweat dust. Then there are higher difficulties if you really want to punish yourself and there is a time trial mode and some unlockables to aim for. It's not the most feature rich game ever but I think it's satisfying enough to just replay and master and enjoy. Now when it comes to the physical release, worldwide there is going to be a standard physical release for Nintendo Switch and PlayStation 5. It's a cheap, affordable release. 
If you want to purchase it and support me at the same time, then check the links down below in the pinned comment. You can buy from Video Games Plus, who ship worldwide for free if you purchase something over 80 Canadian dollars, which is about 60 American dollars. Very nice company who support this channel a lot, thanks to you guys. However, in Europe, on Streetly Limited Games' website, they have an alternative cover version which will not be releasing at the same time as the retail release and we don't really know when. They are going through some uh, financial challenges right now, shall we say. But to separate themselves from the retail release, they do have two special things. One, they have a PlayStation 4 version which is not at retail in Europe or North America. So if you want a PS4 release, this is something to keep an eye on. They also have a collector's edition for each console, which will supposedly include a controller stand, soundtrack CD, collector coin, desk mat, sticker sheet, card set, and poster. I do not advise purchasing from Strictly Limited Games until they have something in stock. I'll pop links down below. They're not affiliate, and I take no responsibility if things don't turn up for the next three years, okay? And if you're really worried and wary, but you still want a PS4 version, then don't worry, because there is another alternative. Japan. Japan is getting a PlayStation 4 release this week, and it should play in English. If you want the Japanese PS4 version, you can grab that from PlayAsia with the links in the description as well. If you purchase from PlayAsia, you can also get 5% off with my discount code JORDAN24. Again, that really supports me ever so much. Overall, would I buy this myself? I think I would, it's not normally my type of game, and it does have some minor flaws that stop it being a perfect action platformer, but it is an affordable physical, less than 30 bucks, so I'm already a sucker for a low price and a really nice game. I'd also like to support Tango Project in going to town on more Natsume remakes. Imagine a Tango Project Super Nintendo Harvest Moon, that would be the best thing ever, they'd probably add a flamethrower to it. How about you? Are you looking forward to this? Which version are you going to go for? Let me know in the comments below. If you want to purchase it, do so with the links in the description and pinned comment. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart. It supports me ever so much. Take care, guys. Have a good day.